In the name of God I am that I am. O oh, invincible light of victory, light of victory and legions of the great central sun, O oh, mighty angels of illumination's flame, we greet thee in the heart of Shambhala, in the heart of the mighty threefold flame of Lord Gautama, Lord Maitreya, beloved Jesus and Kuthumi, beloved Sanat Kumara, holy Kumaras, we are grateful, O living word, to assemble in the company of saints, to assemble with friends of freedom, friends of freedom and beloved Saint Germain. Lord Jesus Christ, expand, expand and expand and expand thy Buddha consciousness within our hearts. O compassionate one, Gautama Buddha, expand the thousand petal lotus in our crown. Violet flame angels, Lord Zadkiel, priests and priestesses of the sacred fire of the seventh ray, beloved Melchizedek, mighty Zarathustra, beloved Enoch. Kindle now the mighty flame of Camelot, kindle the flame of freedom, hold the balance in world turmoil, hold the balance by sacred fire against war and the inroads of war. O mighty flame of light, mighty flame of love and truth, mighty flame of the great central sun, consume the cause and core of world hatred, all hate and hate creation. Beloved Saint Germain, send forth thy light. Beloved Saint Germain and beloved Portia, send forth thy light. In the great victory of the God flame, we call forth the ruby ray. Ruby ray angels of white fire and blue lightning, Ruby ray angels from the great central sun, assemble now and make plain the path of the bodhisattvas, of the mighty ones who are the disciplined ones in love, following the path of personal Christhood. O threefold flame of Shambhala, mark a mighty trail of light from this point to the very heart of the inner retreat. We call in the fervent love of Jesus, the mighty Father and the mighty Son. We call in the fervor of the Holy Spirit. We call in the fervor of the Mother for great wisdom to flood the earth, illumine and kindle minds and hearts and souls. Prepare them, O God, beloved Lord Lanto and Confucius. Now increase the consciousness of God wisdom, of the mighty law of life, of desire for communion with the saints. Increase now in the hearts of the children of the light an awareness of the invisible worlds. We call for the thinning of the veil that the realms of light might be seen, that angels, elementals, and men, mighty archangels, Elohim, and ascended masters might join now in a venture of light, a free will, creativity, and God to overthrow world tyranny, the totalitarian movements of the watchers and the godless. Blaze through and bind their infamy against the light, Find then all betrayers of the light. In the name of Almighty God, I am that I am. We send forth the holy will of God. We send forth the holy will of God. We send forth the holy will of God from our heart's light. Now to swallow up the darkness and the dark ones. Roll it back now and let the mighty golden pathway of the sun open the way to a perpetual path of victory. In the name I am that I am, archangels of the sun, seal now the light of the Buddha, seal the light of Gautama, seal the light of Maitreya, and let God's will be done. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but thine be done. Good evening, everyone.
Let us sing to beloved Lord Maitreya. Number 458.
should be seated. Please turn to Decree 20.09. We have spoken on a number of occasions of the force of the anti-Buddha in the world. The anti-Buddha being that which is anti-American or anti-I am race, world communism, the manipulation of our educational system, making it a force of humanism. We have spoken of that which moves against the Buddha as the drug culture, as rock music, that which would destroy the path of the Buddha as the false hierarchy and the false gurus. The betrayal of the light of the Son of God in each one of us is the planetary force of anti-Buddha. Beloved Jesus has given us this wondrous decree for the casting out of the dweller on the threshold. Jesus explained to me that when we give the judgment call and we are naming names of individuals, we are talking about an individual by a certain name and the self-conscious awareness of the individual. But when we name the individual that is brought before the judgment and demand the casting out of the dweller, then we are getting to the core of the human creation and demanding that it be bound. And so this particular call is a step up from the first call. The first call involves the judgment of words and deeds, the judgment of actions, step by step. That judgment call may bring a judgment to the individual for a single act, uh, for a single embodiment, for a single momentum. Whereas the call on the dweller is the conglomerate of the carnal mind coiled in the center of the electronic belt. It is the first seed of evil, of anti-God at its inception, which has grown to the present hour from the point of its beginning any time when it began, millions of years ago, 100,000 years ago, five years ago. So the dweller on the threshold represents the entire consciousness of human creation. The carnal mind that created the human creation is the dweller on the threshold, which is a term that has been used and adopted by the Brotherhood because it carries the meaning that it sits at that point where the subconscious mind becomes conscious. And I remember the time when we came home from Ghana and we went to Scotland with our beloved Mark. And we took a train to northern Scotland and we went there to Loch Ness. And Loch Ness is a very deep body of water in which there is the legendary Loch Ness monster. And the Loch Ness Monster is supposedly a remnant of some prehistoric type of water beast or leviathan that is mentioned in the Bible. And uh, it supposedly looks like a, a giant sea dinosaur uh, that swims about. And supposedly uh, this Nessie, as they call her, is a female. And so people come from all over the world watching for the Loch Ness Monster. So I can remember how we drove round and round the loch looking for the Loch Ness Monster. And uh, the idea is that uh, you can see its head peeping above the water. Well, Mark said he saw it. <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, there are books printed uh, with supposed pictures that people have taken. This goes back several hundred years that people have been watching this for the Loch Ness Monster. And of course, the, the lock is very uh, still. It's an inland body of water. And um, so seeing it may be seeing just a little sliver of its tail or a sliver of its head or a sliver of its back. But that body of water or any body of water represents the threshold from the conscious to the subconscious mind. Whatever is beneath the surface is the beneath the surface of awareness. We may get rumblings and intimations and feelings that it's there, but until it finally appears and expresses itself in some way, we don't necessarily have the definition of what this carnal mind is. And so we call it the dweller on the threshold. 
it's right there ready to come through the door of consciousness but at that threshold the guardian action of the Christ mind the holy angels and one's free will stands to prevent the carnal mind from actually surfacing and moving into action now there are individuals of course uh, who do not stand guard and therefore become suddenly and uh, ferociously the instrument of a beast that is out of control. And so you see this where uh, the more people become psychologically disturbed and have divisions in the four lower bodies, the more they may be apt to manifest aberrations, they may be schizophrenic, they may be subject to hearing voices and carrying out anything from mayhem to very li ridiculous little deeds uh, which they are repeating all day long and therefore put in men mental homes or institutions because of this. So supposedly in our society the difference between someone who is sane and someone who is insane would be the individual who keeps control of that Loch Ness monster, that dweller on the threshold, and uh, makes a conscious decision not to allow uh, the carnal mind in its full ferocity to manifest in the events of life. So obviously uh, many people are totally dominated by the carnal mind and extremely sane uh, at the same time or at least sane appearing. When you get to know them you don't think they're quite sane but they manage to run banks and big businesses and all kinds of things on this planet and uh, the planet manages to survive and we survive and sometimes we wonder how it all works. Well there comes a time in the life of the individual who contacts the path where if they contact the path and if they contact the masters or their representative they come face to face with Christ and Antichrist or their personal Christ self and the personal dweller on the threshold and they may see both face to face. Now this may not happen the very day of the encounter with the Great White Brotherhood but by and by it does occur and sometimes people manage to follow the path and the masters and the teachings for many, many years without having the confrontation. Uh, they avoid it or they try to avoid the appearance of having had the confrontation. So some people uh, may avoid the encounter or avoid the appearance of having it, but ultimately when the masters determine to do so, they will force the confrontation and force the individual to make a choice between Christ or Antichrist. This may occur at any time on the path. Now, I know that some people, people all over the world who've been studying the teachings of the masters for years, some people have studied them 20 years, I've never met them, faithful readers of the pearls of wisdom and faithful keepers of the flame. But for one reason or another, uh, I've never met them. Perhaps they've never been to a conference. Perhaps they're aged or whatever the reason. They may or may not have had a confrontation. Some of these people are extremely advanced souls. And some of them may be what you would call fringe people. And the same is true of those who have come closer to the organization. So you find that on the path, every individual is a very unique world. And my service to the Brotherhood is that of messenger, where I do not preempt the master's uh, intensification of their ray upon an individual. I may be fully aware of an individual's level of their own Christ consciousness, not necessarily that they have externalized it, but that I know that it is there in potential, and day by day and year by year, uh, they are making that slow but sure progress of putting on the mantle of their Christhood. I might also be aware of the fact that a person has a, a very large momentum of the building of the dweller on the threshold and may not be doing too much about casting that dweller out or overcoming those momentums but may instead uh, be leaning toward the dweller and avoiding and kind of circling around and uh, dodging the encounter with the Christ that would force them to bind the dweller. And many times, for many years, I will simply look in the other direction uh, while this individual is uh, thinking perhaps that he is actually getting away with not surrendering uh, the elements of the carnal mind. And so the reason that I do this is because it is not my place 
to preempt the encounter of your soul with the master who is your initiator, be it Saint Germain or El Moria or Lanello. Uh, because I am so careful about not getting in the way of this relationship, I find that the masters trick me. And what they do is they, they have me go and tell someone to do something or request something of them, which I would consider something uh, uh, not earth-shaking, not problematical, and nothing that would really cause anyone a problem. And sometimes when I do this, I find that on the contrary to the individual that I uh, present this to, it is an enormous problem, and it does result in a, in a division in the person where they become very angry and very furious with me and challenge me and tell me that they are not going to meet this request. Uh, whereupon I say, well, if I'd known it would be, have been such a problem, I would not have even brought it up in the first place. But of course it's out, and uh, therefore I have to stand on the fact that the rock of Christ has in fact been the testing of a soul without my realizing that it would happen. And other times I will be sent on an, a mission to deal with such situations and know very well that it could be extremely touchy and I'm prepared for the worst and oftentimes the best happens and people make forward strides and are very grateful and, and the whole circle of community is benefited. So in the matter of the dweller then and the Christ, we all have an opportunity where in the meditation of our own heart, in the private communion of God with us and the patience of God with us, little by little we are given the opportunity to make choices without being under the ultimate pressure of choose ye this day whom you will serve, give this up, give that up, and so forth. And so we may spend years or embodiments, long periods of time because the law is very gracious to us, uh, figuring out this very problem of our own being, being able to see very clearly that we have some element of human creation, some character trait which we definitely do not like. We know we don't want it. We smash it every time we see it. It reappears now and then. We smash it again. God knows we're trying and we're not fooling, and he leaves us alone. He lets us conquer, lets us overcome. Then there's the other thing where people will hide from God, will tarry, will procrastinate too long, and the great law says, thus far and no farther, you have done this little foible for thousands of years, you have acted in rebellion for thousands of years, and this time, this is it. This particular act of rebellion will be the telling one, and the master will challenge the person through me. Either you renounce it and make an about face now, or you may no longer be considered a chila of the Great White Brotherhood. Those, of course, are very trying times for me, and I, I simply act as I am told to act, and I, I take a great striving in my soul to be, ob to be obedient and to be impersonal so that I am really a messenger rather than a teacher or a judge or a tempter or a tester and so forth, that I am truly acting in the office of messenger, conveying only that which is the will of whichever master it is who is dealing with the chila. So then we come to the actual initiation on the path, the initiation on the path that comes nigh the point of the crucifixion when the individual has ultimate Christ attainment and is required to slay that dweller totally and utterly. Jesus could not have been on the cross had he not slain the dweller. And as a matter of fact, his illustration of slaying the dweller was his confrontation with Satan in the wilderness three years before the crucifixion. And that was the world dweller. The planetary dweller on the threshold was Satan himself. And he was able to deal with a planetary dweller because he himself had already slain the personal dweller, which is why he said, the prince of this world cometh and findeth nothing in me. So the world the planetary momentum of the dweller on the threshold, which means the collective carnal mind of all evolutions of the planet, can move against the individual who has not yet slain his personal carnal mind, and therefore the planetary momentum will tie into the personal carnal mind, activate it, 
And at that moment, the individual must slay not only the personal carnal mind, but in so slaying it, drive back the planetary momentum and overcome. Now, you may resist the temptation of your carnal mind and of the planetary dweller, but you may not have completely slain that one. And so there is a point of, of winning on the occasion of overcoming in that instance, and then there is the point of winning ultimately because the total beast has been slain. Well, there comes a time when individuals on the path, therefore, have had the fullness of the teaching, the light, the masters, and that fullness is not gauged by years, but by the total evolution of the life stream. It may be one year, it may be three years, it may be 20 years, it may be uh, many embodiments. But there comes a point when the individual has full awareness of the Christ in the masters, in the messenger, full awareness of what the darkness is and what the carnal mind is, and they must come to a position of deciding for or against the brotherhood or the false hierarchy. And this is the why. And the why in the path is the point where one may actually become Christ or Antichrist. One may refuse to surrender that dweller and slay it. And therefore, because of that and because the initiation has come, the individual actually puts on, personifies, identifies with, and is the dweller on the threshold incarnate. And therefore, this individual would be called a black magician. Now, this may happen very quickly. It may happen overnight. Because the period of time when an individual walks the path as a follower of Christ and the path of discipleship still having the mantle of the brotherhood, the grace and the opportunity, occurs right up until the hour of decision. And so one day one can see an individual, a part of the community and in the grace of the masters, enjoying certain privileges because they have an opportunity to serve, to make the right decision. But the day of decision will come. The individual may be confronted at any level of his being not necessarily by me, but it may be through me. And he may at that moment decide that he will not give in, he will not bend the knee, will not confess the Christ, but considers his own identity the Christ, which in fact is the dweller on the threshold, inverts the two in his own mind and steps forth the living dweller on the threshold. Now this has happened and it happens to people and it is not something that I have pointed out specifically and personally in the community. These are very advanced initiations. They are very burdensome to my heart to see. But you have been aware, some of you over the years, that individuals turn into the darkest of darkness overnight and do leave the community and become arch deceivers and arch betrayers. And those people today uh, have dedicated their lives to the destruction of the organization and of me. And these people, therefore, have become their dweller on the threshold. They no longer even pretend to follow the teachings of the Brotherhood. They deny that they are real. They deny the masters. They deny the path. It is of no concern to them that they make karma. In fact, they have totally personified the dweller. And they are content to be that dweller, almost unconcerned or unaware that they are on the pathway of self-destruction, self-extinguishment, and ultimately the second death. But this cycle may take many, many cycles according to cosmic law and according to years. So this particular decree, I cast out the dweller on the threshold, has to do with the confrontation of those who have chosen the path of discipleship under Jesus Christ or one of the masters. They may or may not have ever come to the why yet. They may be children who have not yet decided or not yet had the attainment to fully incarnate the Christ. They may not be at that point of initiation. They may not be a Christed one who has the ability to either fight or defend himself against the Antichrist or the dweller on the threshold. But nevertheless, these people are in fact being confronted and moved against by those who have embodied the dweller on the threshold. The one who embodies that dweller, being a black magician, 
having passed the point of the Y, is actually incarnating the equivalent of evil to the equivalent of light he had when he fell. He has totally inverted his dispensation of light. Now, since that one may have been a watcher or a fallen angel, or as we know, Lucifer was an archangel who fell, the attainment at the point of the fall was very great, a great light. So the greater the light at the point of the fall, the greater the fall. And the longer the fall, because God gives to that one an opportunity according to the attainment at the time of the fall to repent and to return to him. So those who misqualify a great deal of light may have a longer opportunity. And so we know that the opportunity of the fallen ones, the watchers, has been very, very, very long until even the psalmist thousands of years ago cried out, how long, O Lord, how long will the watchers triumph? Because it seems endless that they have the power of the dweller on the threshold to move against the children of God who seem so much uh, less powerful and seem so help helpless. And so these move in the embodiment of the dweller until they should be confronted by someone in embodiment who has the equal attainment of light who did not fall and who is willing to stand and challenge them. And this is why John the Baptist and Jesus, as well as the prophets and the avatars of all ages, have come to the earth, and why Jesus said, for judgment I am come into the world. And they come because they want to give a reprieve to the blessed children of God who are tormented by these fallen ones and yet have not the ability to move against them. Now in this hour of the Aquarian age and the dispensation of Saint Germain, we find that by the science of the spoken word, when we decree in the name of the Christ, in the name of the entire spirit of the Great White Brotherhood or any ascended masters, all whom we name, when you decree in the name of someone, you are decreeing in the name of their attainment or in the power or magnitude of their attainment. So when you decree in the name of Saint Germain, you instantaneously have behind your call the full power of the attainment of the causal body of the Ascended Master Saint Germain. And that multiplies the power of your heart, and it is as though Saint Germain and your heart are one, and therefore when you confront an adversary, you know that Saint Germain has the greater power, uh, or the equivalent of the power, let's say, of an archangel when he fell, and therefore is able to fulfill the decree of the word through you. This is why little children, children of the light, those who have not balanced the threefold flame, those who recently even come into the teaching, may take up a decree book, give calls, and we find that our concerted efforts can move situations of the mafia, world wars, energy situations, the economy, all of which is controlled by watchers and fallen ones who have actually embodied the dweller on the threshold and gone unchallenged, probably since the last Christed one appeared, which was the Lord Jesus Christ, or perhaps some of the saints of India. So all of a sudden we are seeing tremendous world change. The fallen ones are shocked and affrighted. They cannot believe that they could be challenged and that the light could win. They are so used to looking down upon the children of God who do not have the momentum that they have. The children of God do not have on the right-handed path of light the momentum that the fallen ones have on the left-handed path of evil. And so whatever point at which an individual decided to embody the dweller, he inverts the light he had at that moment, but then he goes on creating greater darkness as he is able to fool the children of the light, to get them to argue with each other, be bickering, discordant, create wars, bloodshed, get into trouble. And so making karma and putting their attention upon the fallen ones, the children of God unwittingly give them their energy and therefore someone who walks the earth as an antichrist, as, a, as the incarnate dweller on the threshold, may actually gather more power of darkness unto himself by the schemes perpetrated. And many of these schemes center on money, because money is power. Money, even if it's paper, represents gold, it represents energy, it, rep it represents supply, the abundance of God, and it has a worth that is determined by the sacred labor of the people. 
So by the labor of the people, money has value, and when it is amassed by those who embody the dweller, uh, that means power. And so power, money are an equivalent, and we find that these people have used their power, gained as money, to turn world conditions and world events toward themselves and to propagate after their kind. And so they attract into their families, their offspring, those who have also chosen to embody the dweller on the threshold. And so these reincarnate. And so the cycle continues. So Jesus thought long and hard before giving this dictation and this decree. And he gave it to us after having already given to us the they shall not pass decree. And you see how many years we have actually been using that decree. And we see that it's been since 1978, which seems a long time ago. And now this is 1983. So it is out of the trust of the Son of God, Jesus, of the correct use of the judgment calls by the greater number of the devotees that he gives to us a much more incisive call. It's a very important call because when we say, I cast out the dweller on the threshold, we're talking about the personal and planetary dweller. We're talking about everyone on earth who has chosen the left-handed path. And if we name the individuals who are persecuting the light, persecuting the church, persecuting the messenger, persecuting God in any form as the youth of the world, we name the person and what is bound is the core of the evil within them. And this is more than the judgment call. When both are combined with Estrellas and plenty of protection calls, you will find that the archangels can move in with Archangel Michael and do a wondrous work for us. So I am therefore very joyous to have this tool, and I wanted to be certain that those of you who could remain till this evening, for which I'm so very grateful, could understand just how powerful this dictation is. These are the words of Jesus Christ, and it is written in the Bible that the Father has committed all judgment unto the Son. And the Son, Jesus, has given that judgment to the apostles. And therefore, we see that by the lineage of the path of discipleship, we have the mantle and the dispensation. Now, in this very moment of Jesus' dispensation from our beloved Father to have his electronic presence over everyone in whom there burns a certain measure of the threefold flame, we realize that when we say this in Jesus' name, we are all automatically saying it in the name of the Christ self of everyone with whom Jesus is one through this new dispensation. So the power is limitless. We must see it as such, and we must be relentless to deal with individuals, organizations, powers, nations, bankers, whatever the, the conditions are that are anti-Buddha, anti-Christ, anti the Great White Brotherhood, anti truth on the planet. This is where we go, and we go to it every time there is opposition to the absolute God freedom of the living soul to pursue the path of Saint Germain. So I think by the use of this with perfect love, the perfect ruby ray, without any emotional feelings of vengeance or getting even or death wishing or hatred or anything at all, these are no part of the initiates of the sacred fire. In the absolute sense of God justice, that this is the hour of the judgment of many who have chosen the left-handed path, many who have become the Antichrist, many who have inverted the light to create the monster. This is the time that Jesus wants them cast out of the earth. We know not how it is accomplished. We have no visions that they are going to go through a physical death or the second death. We only know we are charged to make the call and that the armies of heaven and the archangels implement the call. We are sons of God. We work on the yellow ray. The Elohim work on the power ray, and the angels work on the pink. And therefore, we are one with the mind of Christ. The angels will perform their work. The Elohim, all the way through the elementals, will perform theirs. We only need to be certain that we invoke the necessary protection. So I would like to invite you to give with me now the mighty tube of light and a brief call to Archangel Michael, since you've already decreed this evening. And I'd like to make some special calls concerning this decree, and then ask you to join me in giving it. Please stand. Tube of light together. 
and then please join me in this call. I am in the burning of all planetary 
opposition and the Antichrist momentum directed against beloved Lord Maitreya and his disciples. I demand the burning of the entire momentum of Antichrist activity directed against Lord Maitreya, Lord Jesus Christ and Kuthumi, beloved El Moria, beloved Saint Germain, beloved Leonardo, my own heart flame in the office of the messenger directed against Elizabeth Clare, prophet, directed against every Chila and keeper of the flame, everyone in whom there burns a threefold flame, directed against now those in whom there dwells the perfect Christ and with whom is the mighty electronic presence of Jesus. I demand the binding now of the dweller on the threshold and the casting out of the dweller in those individuals who are moving against the church universal and triumphant, specifically in church and state, among the people and those who have left this activity one by one. I demand the binding, therefore, of the betrayers. I demand the binding of the condemners. I demand the binding of the destroyers and those who would move against uh, this activity as the liar and the lie, the murderer and the murderous intent. Bind all opposition to each heart flame, to the heart of Almighty God within us. Bind every malintent to move against Camelot, the teachings of the ascended masters, the word incarnate, the published word, the taped word, against the inner retreat, the royal Teton Ranch, Glastonbury, and all plans of beloved Saint Germain. I demand the binding of the dwelling on the threshold in every family member and all individuals and relatives, all friends and cult watchers, moving against every individual light bearer on the path, both of the landing penetrate through, I demand a mighty action of the sacred fire this night, blaze of all power of Almighty God, I demand the rolling back now of the cause and gore, of the conglomerate of that dweller, personally and in the planetary sense, the false hierarchy of this system of worlds and of all other galaxies, I demand the binding of that dweller now in all spacecraft and all Nephilim gods, O watchers and their godless creation, moving on planet Earth, this system of worlds, this galaxy, and all other galaxies back to the heart of God and the great central sun. In the name of Alpha and Omega, we decree. Together. In the name of my beloved, mighty, I am present and holy Christ self, Archangel Michael and host of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I challenge the personal and planetary dweller on the threshold and I say, you have no power over me. You may not threaten or mar the face of my God within my soul. You may not taunt or tempt me with past or present or future, for I am in with Christ in God. I am his bride. I am accepted by the Lord. You have no power to destroy me. Therefore, be bound by the Lord himself. Your day is done. You may no longer inhabit this temple. In the name I am that I am, be bound, you tempter of my soul. Be bound, you point of pride of the original fall of the fallen ones. You have no power, no reality, no worth. You occupy no time or space of my being. You have no power in my temple. You may no longer steal the light of my chakras. You may not steal the light of my heart flame or my I am presence. Be bound then, O serpent and his seed, and all implants of the sinister force. For I am that I am. I am the Son of God this day, and I occupy this temple fully and wholly until the coming of the Lord, until the new day, until all be fulfilled, and until this generation of the seed of serpent pass away. Burn through, O living word of God, by the power of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, in the name Raman, I am that I am, and I stand, and I cast out the dweller. Let it be bound by the power of the Lord's host. Let it be consigned to the flame of the sacred fire of Alpha and Omega, that that one may not go out to tempt the innocent and the babes in Christ. Praise the power of Elohim, Elohim of God, Elohim of God, Elohim of God. Descend now in answer to my call, as the mandate of the Lord, as above, so below. Occupy now, bind the fallen self, bind the synthetic self. Be out then, bind the fallen one, for there is no more remnant or residue in my life of any or any part of that one. Lo, I am in Jesus' name, the victor over death and hell. Lo, I am in Jesus' name, the victor over death and hell. Lo, I am that I am in me, in the name of Jesus Christ, is here and now the victor over death and hell. Lo, it is done. In the name of my beloved mighty I am presence and holy Christ self, Archangel Michael and the hosts of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I challenge the personal and planetary dweller on the threshold, and I say, you have no power over me. You may not threaten or mar the face of my God within my soul. You may not taunt or tempt me with past or present or future, for I am hid with Christ in God. I am his bride. I am accepted by the Lord. You have no power to destroy me. Therefore, be bound by the Lord himself. Your day is done. You may no longer inhabit this temple. In the name I am that I am, be bound, you tempter of my soul. Be bound, you coin of pride of the original fall of the fallen ones. You have no power, no reality, no worth. You occupy no time or space of my being. You have no power in my temple. You may no longer steal the light of my chakras. You may not steal the light of my heart flame or my I am presence. Be bound then, O serpent, and his seed, and all implants of the sinister force. For I am that I am. I am the Son of God this day, and I occupy this temple fully and wholly until the coming of the Lord, until the new day, until all be fulfilled, and until this generation of the seed of serpent pass away. Burn through, O living word of God, by the power of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, in the name Brahma. I am that I am, and I stand, and I cast out the dweller. Let him be bound by the power of the Lord's host. Let him be consigned to the flame of the sacred fire of Alpha and Omega, that that one may not go out to tempt the innocent and the babes in Christ. Please the power of Elohim, Elohim of God, Elohim of God, Elohim of God. Now in answer to my call, as the mandate of the Lord, as above, so below, occupy now. Find the fallen self, find the synthetic self, be out then, find the fallen one. For there is no more remnant or residue in my life of any or any part of that one. Lo, I am in Jesus' name, the victor over death and hell. Lo, I am in Jesus' name, the victor over death and hell. Lo, I am that I am in me, in the name of Jesus Christ, is here and now the victor over death and hell. Lo, it is done. In the name of my beloved, mighty I am present and holy Christ self, Archangel Michael and the host of the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I challenge the personal and planetary dweller on the threshold, and I say, you have no power over me. You may not threaten or mar the face of my God within my soul. You may not taunt or tempt me with past or present or future, for I am hid with Christ in God. I am his bride. I am accepted by the Lord. You have no power to destroy me. Therefore, be bound by the Lord himself. Your day is done. You may no longer inhabit this temple. In the name I am that I am, be bound, you tempter of my soul. Be bound, you point of pride of the original fall of the fallen ones. You have no power, no reality, no worth. You occupy no time or space of my being. You have no power in my temple. You may no longer steal the light of my chakras. You may not steal the light of my heart flame or my I am presence. Be bound then, O serpent and his seed and all implants of the sinister force. For I am that I am. I am the Son of God this day, and I occupy this temple fully and wholly until the coming of the Lord, until the new day, until all be fulfilled, and until this generation of the seed of serpent pass away. Burn through, O living word of God, by the power of Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, in the name Brahma. I am that I am, and I stand, and I cast out the dweller. Let him be bound by the power of the Lord's host. Let him be consigned to the flame of the sacred fire of Alpha and Omega, that that one may not go out to tempt the innocent and the babes in Christ. Please the power of Elohim, Elohim of God, Elohim of God, Elohim of God. Descend now in answer to my call, as the mandate of the Lord, as above, so below. Occupy now, find the fallen self, find the synthetic self, be out then, find the fallen one, for there is no more remnant or residue in my life of any or any part of that one. Lo, I am in Jesus' name, the victor over death and hell. Lo, I am in Jesus' name, the victor over death and hell. Lo, I am that I am in me, in the name of Jesus Christ, is here and now the victor over death and hell. Lo, it is done. And in full faith I come to accept this manifest, manifest, manifest. And in full faith I come to accept this manifest, manifest, manifest. And in full faith I come to accept this manifest, manifest, manifest. 
Right here and now with full power, eternally sustained both power of the active, ever expanding and world and fully, till all our holy ascended in the light and free. Beloved I am, beloved I am, beloved I am. In the great joy of the Buddha's victory, let us sing to our precious Dwal Kul. Number 455. This is the clearance for the 12 lines of the clock, just like the decree. Please visualize yourself now, focusing the energy you have just invoked to bind the carnal mind on each of the 12 lines of the clock. <laughs> 